welcome to this awesome day of FileMaker training, if I can figure out how to get out of that space. I'm Richard Carlton. I am the creator of FMTraining.tv, where every day we are doing great FileMaker training. Uh, if you want to check out the FMTraining.tv website, I go to FMTraining.tv. And uh, cool, there we go. Uh, you can see the upcoming live broadcast schedule by pressing this button right here. You see that we got some Nick action today and tomorrow. Now, today's day two, day three of the holy beep. This FileMaker solution is hideous, and Nick is trying to clean it up. But we're trying to do that really nicely, right? So that's the idea is to, to make the developers, you know, it's, it's Nick for Nick to show how you've done really great work, but then how to make it better, I think, would be the great the correct way of saying that so that's uh, today tomorrow friday uh christian schmidt will be back we'll be doing web viewer stuff uh plugins with web viewer stuff i'm not sure what that's about um unsafe acts with a web viewer in your filemaker application then we have existing filemaker design uh modernization so that will be continuation next week with day four day five and i think day six now um we are actively working for those of you wondering about the javascript stuff so we are actively working on bringing you uh, the material here. So this is the free content that's here. Um, basically, if you want to download the pages, you make sure you sign up on our newsletter list. That's kind of the quid pro quo. You get free videos, but we get to send you newsletters that you can unsubscribe from. If you are part of the paid content, you paid for the training, you're going to see these. Day four is actually, I'm reviewing it actually as I get done here. I'll be watching day four while you folks are watching Nick. So uh, for those of you who bought the course, expect an update from me as we get all the videos posted, all the clean videos posted. And then what we will be doing is we will be um, making sure you get all the downloads and links. So then we're kind of done with that course. We've delivered all the content to you the way we promised we would. So Margaret, we're going to let Nick transfer command to Nick. Nick, what are we doing today? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, for joining today for the second day of their, uh, this new series we have, you know, the workshop that we take you file and we do it. Okay. So uh, today we do our, we, we continue rebuilding Ken's files, right? So uh, so yesterday we learned many things and many tricks, interesting tricks like uh, transferring a con conditional, uh, like how to reuse. So I want to, uh, to show you um, so basically, how to rebuild the file within an existing file, right? So, but it's a rebuild, you know, and uh, but we, but within the file, and uh, also how you can reuse what you learn and reuse what you give you. You know, all the material we give you, like uh, FM starting points, uh, both version, you know, the, the the light version or the advanced version, and uh, so you have. Plenty of objects, plenty of uh, components that I, I call that components is when you have a, a combination of multiple objects that build a new feature, right? So we're going to I'm going to show you how to reuse that with a minimum of rework, right? A very light rework, very light. So and and then you can you can be extremely pro productive productive uh, along your process of rebuilding your existing for solution with a new technique, new or uh, layout object, new theme, new everything, right? New design. So um, also, what we've learned yes, uh, yesterday, and we, I'm I'm going to continue like this, right? Is the uh, the consistency? Well, uh, you know, consistency on what you do is the the key to save a lot of time. On, on creation or on modification and on debugging, okay? So when you're consistent, uh, you, it's, uh, everything gets in place. You know, you have all the pieces of the puzzle getting in place, right? You don't have like a, a piece of the puzzle or from another puzzle and you don't know what it is, right? So, so it's very important. So today we're, we're going to continue our, to rebuild Ken's file, right? And we're going to do that for three weeks, you know? So our, we we stuck together a little bit, but it's it will be interesting. So let me share my screen right quick here. So share the screen, share the screen. Okay, so hide zoom. So yesterday we built we, we were focusing on this. So we go we going we we're going to continue focusing on this, right? So we're going to continue like this and go uh, to the right like this, right? So so our Yesterday we built this, you know, our this 
field here, which is a combination of multiple other fields. And we can display many things in one place, right? Uh, like, our, like I showed yesterday on this example here, right? On this example here, you have many things happening here, right? So in one row, you have many fields because here we cannot display all what we want, right? So it's a, it's a master of the master detail, right? So we cannot display them. We cannot go more than four rows, you know? It's uh, if you go more, it start to look awkward, you know? Four, it's, a, it's a, the maximum. Also, you can see here, I'm using kind of a, a color pattern, pa pattern, right? Or to uh, to emphasize and make things to outstand without crushing the design, you know, because this is something we we do, you know. Or uh, and here we have an example. Or uh, you know, when you want to, uh, when everything is crushing and we want to, everything is splashing on your face and you want to out to get something outstanding more. You need to get it bigger like this, for example, or you need to get it uh, even a flashier colors, right? So you crush. And then if you have something you want to outstand more, you need to go even more, right? So so we have all the techniques for that and uh, playing with the color like this, right? So uh, this is blue and we have only this, but smaller, right? And then we have this black and this lighter gray, right? So we use this color or, you know, like, Grayed, grayed out, right? And and we use the accent color, okay? This is an accent, okay? Or we have accent here, so buttons are take accent. Sometimes we we put accent on the the day of the dates, right? Or we can do that. Uh, we have accent on which one is, you know, selected here, you know. So we have an accent. So we have few accents here but always always the same color the accent must be the same color right always you have you cannot have many colors otherwise you need to use wisely the the color scheme because or uh, as i said you know in the in the design so let's let's have a kind of a recap of the of the rule here on the coloring on your on your layout you have two type of colors you have the expression and you have the function. You have two color uh, type. The first, the expression is the accent. This is an expression. This ex express something, you know, or uh, this blue, this blue, this blue, this blue, this blue here, this blue here. So this is an expression, okay? It is not a function. So what is a function? Okay, uh, the the green here it's a function. It has a function. It gives you an information. Here, I don't give you any information. Any, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. If that blue, it's just express a difference, right? It's just to differentiate two objects, right? But here, there's an expression. Right, like here we can see, we have the green. Green is good, you know. In our world, green you can go. Green is good. Green passed. You passed the test. Green, right? Uh, traffic light green. You can go, right? Red, it's not good. Red is cold. Red is hot. Red, dangerous. Right? Always, we are conditioned since our you know, since baby, that red is bad. Red is dangerous. Red don't go. Red, you have to stop at the traffic light, okay? So that's why those are functions. They give you an information, right? That's why we can do, we can use many colors. Orange, yellow, green, dark green, gray, right? We can use colors right here on the on the function side but of course you don't you must be careful not crushing not making everything with colors right everything with an, with a function like green or yellow or blue or 
uh, red. You know, you have to be careful because otherwise you are, are canceling the mean of that function because you have so much, you don't even know what does it mean anymore, right? So you need to use that wisely on your layout, right? And that's what we are going to do because the Kent's layout is interesting because we have a lot of, uh, of, of uh, statuses, right? So let's continue a little bit here. So let's finish this, right? So here we said, um, so here we want to, uh, here we want to put the photo, right? So Ken, we have the photo here, right? So uh, let's go yes. and take the, yeah. So let's take the photo here. I can just copy use, right? And put here. And uh, let's put that default, revert to change. You know, then I have the default. And I have an alternate uh, one here, the, the alternate container too. And um, I can now put the 100 back here, uh, here, right? So I have my picture back, right? So I can put the picture here. And I can put it a little bit bigger. So I have a nice picture here, right? Okay, so so I, I'm I bet here you have yeah. So this is a good trick. So I'm I'm going to explain. Okay. So here we have the picture, but when it's empty, we have the the initials. A little bit like you have on your phone, you know, when you have a contact and you have the, a picture of your contact, you have the picture, otherwise you have the initials, right? And to do that, before we were doing like a trick with the hidden object in the field on top of the, but here now, <clears throat> we use the placeholder. So what a placeholder on the, on the field, right? So let's take, uh, I don't know, something that would be empty, uh, email, for example. Uh, no email. Okay. So what a placeholder, right? So a placeholder is when you have a field. I don't know why, you know, I do this. Okay. So when you have a field, right? When it's empty, instead to be empty, when the field is empty, you can say you want something. Okay. Okay. So you can put email here, right? And you have email. And if you put something, you don't have it anymore, right? That's a placeholder, right? But a placeholder can be many things. First, what I want to tell you is when you have, when you put the name here, this name here, right? Is exactly the same as the name of the field, right? Exactly the same as the name of the field. If you change the name of the field, right? It changes a placeholder as well. So when you have the same name, the same word, okay? So here it would change the to email two. No, it didn't do it. Okay, cool. If I'm if I name this the same as a field, right? It should have renamed this. So they break it. Ha! Huh. They might have break it. Eh? See? Okay, so they break it because that always worked. Uh, since 12. They introduced that in 12, so they break it. It should have renamed, you know, their... Yeah, they broke it. So that's a bug. Claris, you have a bug here. You break this. So, um, you know, because it follows the same rules as this, right? If uh, if you if you create a label, this is this is a label. Right. So if I, oh, maybe I don't rename the same, the, the right field, but you have email here. Yeah. So if I, rem if I change this, right. If I change this, the, the label change as well, right. The label will be email free. And no, nothing works. What the heck? That's super weird, huh? No, don't feel you don't feel full because I said that's super weird, something wrong. What version is this? 
Can somebody try on the on this version? Because that's a big break. So I dragged this. I said, I want the label. I, I go layout mode. I change this back. So we have a bug here. Many. So it's it's weird. So I, I don't know if it's my, my version or all the version doing this, but they broke this. Okay. See, somebody can try on the this version, a 19.6. Dot three dot three or two, which should I'm be. Trying it. I'm trying it on mine. Yeah. Uh, should be the light, the latest though. Yeah, that's the latest. But that's always worked, right? It's, since the beginning of FileMaker, since version one is doing this, so something has happened here. Okay. So anyway. So that's a placeholder, but the placeholder can be something calculated, right? So we can say, you know, or whatever calculation get can be the get current date, for example. You can put that as a placeholder, right? And then you can see the, the current date, right? So you can do whatever you want. We can put whatever you want. So if we have a field with the initial, we can put the initial as a placeholder. So when the, the the container because that placeholder stuff works also on place on, on containers. So when you have a container, it's empty. You put the initials and instead of the the field, and you change in the in the in the style. You change the style of the placeholder. You can put the style you want, right, right. So you can you can put the style you want here, right. The the, the size you can that that is for the placeholder right? here. On the style, you change this on the style. Okay, so now we have this, so we can add other uh, fields, right? So I bet we have uh, we have the the uh, last last name first, okay? Last name first. So oh, name last, okay. Name last first. The placeholder and the name both changed for me. So like have, you expected it to. Yeah. So I have a problem in mind. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. I, I will check that later. Um, so and uh, so I have this, right? And we can put something else. So yesterday you said you want something else. Uh, we can put something else as a third, uh, a third calculation. A third. I think yeah, maybe in the third line, um, if we could put the status of the pilot and the status of the balloon. Status of the pilot and the status of the balloon. Yeah. Uh, so where is it? They're on this? the. They're over one column. They're between there because that over to the right one. Yeah. Here. Yeah, the top, the little one above it and below it. Those two. Yeah, because we have the combined in the um, side field. Yes. But this here, okay, so here we have a problem. Okay, a problem. We have something we need to address, okay? So this is a related, it's a, it's a related field, okay? It's a related field, and we cannot use related fields right here. I strongly not recommend it because it will be slow. It will be the, the 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 scrolling will be like you know awkward. You know it won't be it won't be like uh, fluid, right? The scroll won't be fluid. So I don't recommend it at all. But that's a way. That's a way to change this. First, here I realize that the status combined was an install calculation okay the status combined was an install calculation so i changed this to an auto entry calculation right and this won't work we can remove it so we have a trigger so what the trigger so what the trigger is doing right so what the trigger is doing here those fields, right? Those fields are are use uh, you know related fields here, right? 
related fields, related fields, related fields. But here we have a status pilot. So, okay, so here we don't need the trigger because the status pilot will change this. But it depends. So how, how the auto entry works or how the auto entry works. The auto entry calculation, if this checkbox is not checked, okay, this one. If you change one of those fields, it will trigger. So you need to have at least one field in the calculation that gets changed on the layout. You are edited, right? So if I edit status pilots, that will trigger the whole thing. But if all the fields all of the calculation are from a related table, it won't work. Even if you go, if you even if you have on the on the on the on the layout, you have the related field that you change manually, the related fields, it won't trigger the auto entry. So you need a field that is local on the same table as this one. So this here is part of the of the context where the calculation is uh, attached. So if I change the old status pilot, because the status pilot is in the pilot table, the main table, the current related, the current table, right? Then it will trigger, right? So, but I need to know the, the I need to know the nature. I need to know the nature of this uh status pilot fields it's a text so that's something you change right but it's also a not to entry calculation but right it will trigger if this field change by a not to entry calculation it will also trigger the auto entry calculation of the other fields in other in other way all the fields Depending to another to another field by auto entry calculation, that will trigger uh, like a cascading effect. Okay, so here, uh, the case here, I have no changing, right? I have no changing. That means, yeah. So the, I've, I've, if this change, or this change, or this change, or, so here. I wouldn't have need the trigger anyway, because depending on those fields as well. So the certificate status, all those certificates, right? So they will trigger, you know, all the certificates and all those things. All of this will be uh, triggered, okay? So because you change it. Right? But this now, okay, uh, I realize that it's going a little bit, you know, uh, it's going a lot. So we're going to put the two, but uh, what I want to do now, I want to make this status balloon and this status pilots, right, together, right, together, and uh, to, to build like a line where I'm going to put both, okay? Where I'm going to put both in one line, okay? So typically, here, our, we use a trigger with a auto entry calculation, and we are going to build this. Okay. So, how to build something like this? You know, I'm going to put the. I'm going to use. I'm going to use, reuse the pilot info. Right, and I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to say that is a status info display okay i have the status okay and here i'm going to build my calc so what do i want here okay i want the pilots so that that is right that the status pilot right yes here, this one. Yes. And I want the and I want the balloon, which is 
in the balloon table this right also i need to use the trigger so i need in my calc so we uh, can we have a uh, mod we have a video for that right yes okay so th this field here if i change this field all the auto entry calculation where i have this inside will be triggered automatically since since thinking about it right so that's why i use this technique because when I, i'm going to show you that that will trigger this right so we need those two right you know so it, can they be empty no no okay so what we know what what do we want to do now right what do we want to do now we want a list so i'm using the same technique here of p you know pilot right so I, i'm going uh, what is the status uh, how long is the status um I mean, the longest one is gonna probably be about 20 characters okay let's try okay and most of them will be short okay let's try and here i want have this okay here i want balloon right space and and percent balloon okay and i want to replace this by this right so let's see how it works let's see how it looks right this uh yeah because i'm a pilot too i need to be a pilot one okay, okay so now i have this super nice status info display right to have the pilot info display and this but here do we have a do we have a redund a redundancy here? Because I, I feel like we show that on the info, right? I don't think so. No, the status pilot, no. Or oh, the certification here. That the certification in this. Okay. That yeah, the top one was an over. Um, yeah, that was their certificate number on the top one. So this is my trigger. Okay. So now let me explain. I use triggers on everything. For example, uh, let's go to that file here, you know, and let's show you the T16 layout. So why on my triggers, the, the field I use to trigger auto entry calculation, why I'm using timestamps? Do I have the trigger somewhere here? No? I might have it. So I'm going to show the trigger. So why? It's because sometime, so I'm doing like, go to that layer, I have a PSOS, I have a perform screen on server, that go to the server, connect, collect like, a, I don't know, 200 or 500 records, replace the trigger field to trigger all the auto entry calculation on that 500 records, right? And, uh, do I have the trigger somewhere here? No. Weird. And sometime, you know, you especially when you're debugging, okay, especially when you're debugging, uh, you wonder if the trigger happened. Or you can say, why did it work? Oh, because look the date, look the time, you know? Uh, like, for example, imagine that you just trigger it, you just press the button, and here you see that this is a, 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 an hour old or 30 minutes old, right? You say, oh, it didn't work. 
I didn't, it didn't go there. Something wrong, something failed. And th that's why I couldn't replace it. You can see it based on the time. So that gives you an indication when you do the when you do a debugging, right? So let's say I'm going to change this. So you know, let's put the the tr you know I trigger it. So now it's going to come, boom. So here is too big, right? Those too big, right? So yes, but because we put the title pilot ahead of it. I yeah. have that in the status. So if I took that, you, exactly. that so, word pilot out of there. Exa exactly. So we're going to, exactly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going because you have in the you have it on the status. So I don't need that info. But it's okay. You know, it was good to see how we can do that. So I'm going to remove this, right? Because you have it. So I I, I, I bet you have it on the balloon as well. Yes. Right? Okay. So uh, let's replace this. Boom. Missing info pilot, missing info. Go yeah, actually, there. I would probably go the other way. I would leave the title in the calculation and go take pilot and balloon out of the status message. Yes. So we can say current, current. So that's what yes. I was about. You Okay, you, you, you read my mind. So, you know. No, Good, I'm learning something. You're really, yeah. You, are, well, you know, one day you, you, we, I will be watching Kent Tully webinars. So, not uh, on file maker, on other things, <laughs> baby. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we are going to do that, right? So, we're going to modify this, right? So, uh, because it will be better. So, if we say pilot current, balloon current, that, that balloon current, that would be good, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, we can. Are, are let's go where those uh, those status leaves, but in the same time, I'm going to show you how we optimize those statuses. Okay, how we do to get the statuses out of the way. Okay, so let me explain, because this is what I'm going to do now is painful for one reason, and I'm going to show you. So. All the status, the status balloon, right? Here, you have those, you have those, right? Right? Are hard coded, right? Yes. They are, they are hard coded. Okay. So there's two ways to do that, but I'm going to show you the my favorites. Okay. I'm going to show you my favorite way. Okay. So, our, here you have a case, right? So you have a case missing, valid, and stuff like this. Okay. So they are hard coded. So, but you have a lot of uh, not valid, not all, not valid, or not valid. So you see, you have a lot of uh, not valid, not valid, not valid, right? And so, that's also duplicated on the pilot side. So it's double what you're looking at. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we can remove. Okay. So. Uh, I need to understand because there's many statuses. Uh, when, when we work on statuses, I, I like to work on the, uh, that way. I have two fields, you know. I call the status balloon, no, okay, and the status balloon order, okay. And that's a number, and I'll show you why. Here, I'm say. If airworthiness status missing dog or I, I, so, if let's keep that way for the moment. I'm saying this. I want one. This, I want two. The result of the case, right? So you you understand what what happened here? There's a case scenario here that says if this or this, are uh, it says one. It says. What you should have said, you know, I don't remember. By the way, let, let's connect. Let's collect this. So we're going to collect this. We're going to collect this, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to collect all what those results mean. Right. Okay. For further use, you know. Okay. For further use, so I'm going I'm taking this out. So that's the same, you know, those two. 
Oh, cushion balloon. Okay, cushion balloon. Yeah, no, cushion and current. Yeah, okay. Or, and at the end, you have this. Okay? Yeah. So, I'm saying, this one is one, this one is two, this one is three, this one returned four, this one returned five, right? This one returned six, and this one returned zero. Right? Yep. So I have this one equal, two equal, three equal, four equal, five equal, six equal, and zero equal. So, and I'm going to comment out, you know, comment out this. Right. Okay. And I keep it on the layer, on the, on the calculation. As a reference, now I know what this means, right? I know what yep. this means. Okay. So I copy this, right? That, the order, that return a number. That calculation will return one, two, three, four, five, six, or zero. That's the default, you know? Is when all failed, that's zero, okay? So, and now I have this one. I'm going to get rid of this totally, paste this, and I'm going to do this. Choose on the status uh, balloon order that returns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this. We do this. So the first, the zero, when it returns zero, I want this. So you see this? Okay, look, I have another way to do that. So I do this, and I do this. Okay. The first, that the zero. Uh, no, that the zero, sorry. That the zero return this. The one return this. The two we return this. The four return this. Ah. The five return this. The six return this. Right? And at the end, like this. So, right? I don't need that anymore. So that's what returns. So what the choose, you know? What the choose doing? What the shoes doing? Interesting function that exists in the, the beginning of the time. And maybe five or four or five, something like this. Or choose. They will they will tell us. Oh, six. Okay. So what the shoes returning? If the test returns zero, then it will pick whatever you put there. Right? So when the test, that means the status balloon order, if it returns zero, it will take the check, it will return check balloon. Or uh, if it's uh, if it's one, result result one, it will take the missing. The the two, the not valid, the three, the expired today, the four, the cushion, and the five here. I think someone is missing here. We have six, right? Yeah, I missed someone. So the check balloon data, the missing info, the not fly balloon. No fly. Right? Yeah, on the number three. So it is coming there. Okay. So one no more fly. down. Yeah. Zero, one, two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This one. So not valid, no fly, 
expires question. Okay. So that's the choose. So based on this, right? So what the advantage? The advantage is this calculation uh, is no longer returning a, a, a text. It's returning a number. Okay. So I can keep that not touching it at all and work on that field, right? Work on that field and remove my stuff, right? Yep. Okay. So, so we say, okay, what the difference? Difference is it's cleaner, right? I know I can change my names. I can say, okay, I, I can change this and put something else. Uh, need validation or, you know, or, you know, uh, you can, you can, you can do whatever you want and you can have multiple version of this. Okay. You can have multiple version. For, for example, uh, uh, for example, here, uh, well, our, change, change yeah. expires to just expired. Yeah, ex exactly. Expired, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's easier to do that. Or you can have multiple version of this. Like, for example, you can, you can have a long version or short version, you know, depending on where you want to show it. Because this calculation wants, this calculation won't be a problem for PhileMaker. That PhileMaker won't see anything of what happened here. He won't see anything, right? Yeah. So you can have two, two, three, four, five version of it, you know, uh, status balloon long, uh, status balloon short, Depending if you want to show to show it in that list, you want to short. If you want to show it in the layout, you want the long, the, like the dates. You know, you have the long dates, short dates. You, you can have the same thing. And the second advantage is if I want to sort the order, I want to sort by status because if I want to sort the status by the names. Okay. If I want to sort this by the name, you know, it will it will put the the caution first, then the check, then the currents, then the missing, then right. the no fly, then the no and you know what I mean? It will it won't do that order. The sort right. won't sort in that order. But if I sort on this. It will sort on one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, sort by number. All the ones, all the twos, all the threes, all the fours. I don't care about if the one start with a Z and the and the two start with a B and if the three start with an A. It will sort by that order. Even that is a Z and even this is a ZZ. I don't care. You understand? Because right. I'm sorting on the order. So that's the other advantage. And the big, big advantage is when you have a conditional formatting because you say, oh, if the status one, if the status two, if the status three, if the status four, you don't have to say, oh, if the status, copy, paste, caution. And when you come here, you have a, we, and you have a conditional formatting are, are referring to a name, to a word, and you change the word then it you breaks. break your, your breaks. But if I, if, you, if I change, in, in this case, if I change this, I put whatever, I don't care because my conditional formatting will return on whatever it is, which is five, right? And that will right. never change, right? You understand? Yeah. So, so that technique of taking the, the to have the, the two fields, one is the numbers, the other one is the text just to show on the layouts, right? And then you have an extend, extended version of it because I can say to pick those data from a value list if I want. I can say, I can build a value list. I can show you that if you want. Do you want to see that online? See which? Uh, how we connect. Oh. Okay, how, how we connect. Uh, or uh, like this, right? Two L's, two L's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
how we connect this, how we connect the value list to the choose. That means we we have we will have now a calculated uh, status, but with data coming from a value list, which is much faster and easier to change. I don't even have I don't even I don't even have to go to the field anymore. Let me show you. Right? I'm going there. I have the value list, right? Okay. So I have the balloon, the status balloon. Uh no, it's balloon. Okay. Not this one, this one. So I'm putting a let statement here, and I say uh, uh, list of uh, value list. Value list equal this. This is the name of the value list, right? Got it. I want the value list items, which is value list items. File name, we don't care of the value list, right? So I want all the values on this, right? Right. And then now this, I don't do, I don't do check data, I don't care, okay? Because that the reason, that what we return zero. In that case, here what I know, here what I do. I put zero as unknown, right? Okay. Because I, you know, you know what I mean. I don't because I cannot. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I can. No, no, it's okay. No, no. no. Let's do this. Let Let's do something simpler. I want the, when you return zero. I want to get the value of the list of values. Okay. I want the value number one. So I, I'm going to show all all of them. Right? Don't worry. I'm going to explain what's going on here because it's uh, it's a good it's a very very good technique. Because can you imagine now you have a calculation that you can copy paste from from one table to another table. You can reuse it for something else. You can uh, co copy from one file to another. Just you change the name of the value list and boom, you have a new, but you don't have to rebuild all of those things. You understand? It's completely, totally portable and reusable, right? And it's fast as hell as well. So you have, uh, you know, you have so many, so many advantage. Right? Okay. So what this, what this do? Something missing here. Something missing here. And something missing here. Right? Hold on, I need to check. Okay, so copy. And I'm going to show you what happened here. Okay? So what are the benefits? What is the benefits? Okay, all of this. Okay. First is this. So let me explain how this works. Okay? Uh, so we have this. Yeah, I need to uh, put the. Uh, oh, we're in balloon. So I need to go to the balloon table. Balloon table. Okay. So, balloon table. And I need to go balloon table. Okay. So this is check data. You know? The, 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 it returns check data, right? Why? Check data. Because he, he got the, the list of value, the value list item, right? This is what the value list item returns. And here I'm saying, when the status order When the status order, the the uh, status uh, what's the name uh, status balloon order, the status balloon order returns. 
Oh, it doesn't work yet. Okay, that's why he said check data because he said he said we okay, I need to update those fields here. So you we have our we have two you have the trigger here, right? Yeah, we have two triggers. Yeah, right. that was one of those I forgot I had one and all of a sudden built a second one. Yeah, okay, no problem. So I, I rely on this one. So let's let's make this happening, okay? So I have two balloons, so that's easy. Okay. So now on this, if I'm showing the the the, the field, so I'm going to put the field here. So I want to put there the status balloon, right? And the status order. So I have both, right? Right. So here he said six. Oh, okay. I, I might have a button here. So he said six, right? And yeah. here he said one. Six, one. Six, one, right? So here he said missing info. Why? Because the one here in that list, right? It's missing info. The first. And then he said the sixth one in the list is six, it said current. So let's say the value list here. If that's true, the one, the this one here says missing info, right? And uh, the here and the one, two, three, four, five, six. So everything is uh, one below one. Oh, yeah, because I have zero, one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, zero, one. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. So the one here, it's the second of my list. Which is missing info. And then here is the the six written this. Because the zero is this, right? Zero, right. one, two, three, four, five. But zero, I take the uh, you know, when you return zero, I want the the the, the, the value number one. When it's when he if you return one, I want this value number one number two, and stuff like that, you know. So Let's say now, let's say now, I'm going to change the missing info by missing, you know, or invalid or whatever, you know. I'm changing this by, uh, you know, uh, I'm changing this info missing, okay? I'm reversing, yeah. okay? Right. Okay. And now I'm restart this. I re-update the, the trigger. Look what happened. Boom, info missing. I changed the status, the calculated status by changing a value list. But now the the, the data, the, the, the those data are editable in the value list, not anymore in uh what's the name? Uh, in the calculation itself. So this is is better, you know. Because yes, and, we, and we saw the conditional formatting break with that name change. Exactly. Where, don't as care. you said, the conditional based on the number, I wouldn't have that problem. Exactly. And we have the sort order. And and now we can edit outside of the calculation. So now I want, I don't know, I want the, uh, I don't know, or duplicate. I want the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the status, whatever. Uh, with, uh, you know, with a uh, good, uh, not good, or uh, very, you know, or uh, very good, you know, I have a status, whatever, and I can just duplicate my calculations and just say, okay, or, uh, you know, based on the, the new, the whatever order, uh, go to the whatever uh, value list and pick the, the values based on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's yeah. very good. It's uh, yeah. it's extreme. It's extremely valuable to use that technique here. I hope you understand. Uh, I I spent a little bit of time on this, but it was worth it. 
it was worth it to show. So now we have a new uh, we have a new balloon status, right? So we can do the same on you know. So we have the status balloon here. So I can just copy paste. I can copy paste this. I'm I'm going to show you how portable it is. I'm pasting here. So this is the status uh, pilot, right? Yes. So that's the status pi pilot order, okay? So that will be pretty much this, right? So that return one, that return two, right? That return three, that return four, that return five, and that returns zero, right? So we have the same construction. Yeah, right? there's one at the top that would be probably six. The rating uh, equals oh, oh, no, uh, no, no, this was, uh, I'm going to uh, rating equals students, students. Yeah, we can put that six. Oh yeah, but I forgot to to copy uh, what it what 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 it is. So this is let's let's keep the the order. This is one. This is two, right? So we do the same construction. Yeah. This is three. This is four. This is five. Tell me if I'm missing one. And this is zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and zero. And I'm going to comment out this. Copy this. So now I'm going to replace this by one, two, three, four, five, six, and zero. So we have all our stuff, you know, well done. Yeah. Copy this. Okay. So now we're going to. Go to the status pilot, right? Going to get rid of this, put that for now. I'm going to the other calc or uh, on the balloon and say the status here. I'm going to copy this, right? And I'm going to put that in the status or uh, pilot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, right. So we do, I'm going to copy this because I need that, and I'm going to put that in the so in the in the status pilot, right. And this is the status pilot order, right. So yeah. I keep this, so the calc is done. And then I'm going to build the 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 the, the, the value list, the st the status pilot where it will yes. be related to this. So I duplicate this, call it status pilot, paste this, little bit of cleaning, okay, yeah. right. So now, if I go to the pilot and I put the status pilot here, I put the two fields, you know, the two fields, the status pilot, you know, or what, status pilots here and here. I'm putting those two here. And I'm modifying the, the you know, the, the trigger. It didn't come because our 
the trigger is different. That's why. Okay. Uh, status pilot order. This is the one I need to change. Yeah, the trigger. No, it's good. Uh, no. No, I don't. Yeah. You have two triggers. You have a trigger here and you have an uh, underscore trigger. This I have is too opposite. many triggers. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Oops. And it's not clear which one I use where. So yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> now it's okay. So we have it. Boom. Right. So this is yep. what we have. Okay. So now, uh, I need to change the name on the. I forgot to do that on the value list. So so now now we have a value list. So it's easy to change. You know, I'm going to remove pilot. You know, pilot, 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 pilot. You know, whoosh, boom. Get rid of it. So now we have a fully optimized, a fully, uh, you know, a customized, uh, um, a customizable status from outside the calculation. The calculation is universal. That means we can reuse it uh, as we want for many, many other st uh, statuses, which copy paste and that's it, right? So, so now if I restart this, you will see all the statuses changing, right? Boom. So, right? So now I can go to my uh, st st pilot display like uh, uh, info status. Uh, the status, yeah, a pilot a status pilot. Okay, status info, and change that, right? And put my pilot back, pilot, right? And balloon. Right. So here we have a list, and the list. So we build a list with the, the word pilot and the pilot, the word balloon and the balloon status, and we substitute the carriage return by the, by the you know, a dash, right? So now, as you can see, by triggering one field, I trigger everything, right? They're all triggered, all the auto entry calculation triggered, boom, bam, but still too big, but it's okay. Um, you know, we can do something different. You we know, can change okay. the change the word pilot and balloon to just P and P and B. B exactly. So uh, stop reading my mind. I'm going to be <laughs> I'm going to be scared with this. You know, don't read my mind tonight, please. <laughs> but we we good. You know, we I, it's an interesting it's interesting manipulation here because, uh, you know, we learn how to we learn how to use those triggers. And how to to uh, connect value list with calculation? Yeah, so that yeah, look, p check data p current. I can even put a, an icon here, but it's okay. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use a emoji. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can I use an emoji of a balloon? We have an emoji balloon, right? Yeah, we have this one, but we it's have a, that one. There's not a good one, but yeah, we don't have a, the the. The air balloon? No. You know, we don't have air balloon, right? No. What a pity. You should uh, pit, you, you should send a request to the emoji kind of for, uh, you know, we want yeah. a balloon. We want an air balloon. Okay. So question and wrap up or just wrap up? What do you want to do? We will do questions. Two questions real fast and then we will leave. Okay. Um, could we use a table for saving elements of a value list and then create the value list from the table? Yeah, that's even better. But in that case, you don't need a value list. But yeah, you can use the value list as well because the value list connect tables without relationship. You understand? So yeah, you can do that. You can have a table with records and then you say, take the records, right? And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, of course you can have this. Um, the, for the statuses, you can go ev extremely, f you know, far. And by the way, I'm going to I'm going to take note on this. And uh, you know, uh, uh, webinar, uh, webinar, uh, uh, build advanced statuses because I want to do something like, yeah, okay. I want to know how many active I want, I have, how many inactive I have, how many current I have, how many not valid I have, right? How yes. do you do that? 
How you do that, right? It's very it's painful, right? It's painful. Yes. But it's not. But it's not. It's not at all painful. If you use the technique of who, who told me that, was said use the table. I'm going to show you. So yeah, that that is a good uh, it's a good uh, uh, webinar ID. That's why I, I not and I write it down. Next question. Uh, why does the replace on the trigger take so much time to update nine records? Uh, because I'm sharing my screen on Zoom, uh, and uh, yeah, and I'm I'm on server. Uh, I am in Colombia, and the calculation are not. Uh, because we have a lot of things here. Even if you have a lot, if you have, we have a few uh, stuff. You know, it's. Uh, I think you have unstored calculation that points to that status. Or uh... I don't remember pointing to the status, but there's a lot of uh, auto calcs and yeah, some of those, uh, some other things that we were doing. So yeah, exactly. So you have. You don't even you have many auto entry calculations. So when you have a lot of auto entry calculation, uh, you have to trigger them. Yeah, you know. But you know, uh, just okay. Replace uh, on the server, uh, like like this. Look, look, look. I'm showing you. I have twenty thousand records, right? So let's say I'm going to isolate. Uh, I'm going to omit, look, I'm going to omit 1,000 records, okay? Uh, so I'm going to omit 1,000 records. Okay, uh, I mean, select 1,000 records. And I'm going to do a, a, a replace on this, okay? Look this. One, two, three, four. So if I want to do that, I need an hour, right? Correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's see this. I can I read said, your mind because I know where you're going because I've, I've picked this up from you already that I've put in there. <laughs> Go to layouts, T16. Okay. That's a good day. Uh, yeah. Uh, March. Uh, I'm finishing this and then we go. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not long. Okay. I'm going there. I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm, I make sure I'm going to the first record. Okay. I omit multiple records. Okay. And I said I want to omit thousand. All right. And show omit records. Okay. So I, I'm doing whatever I did here. And I said replace field contents. Right. The trigger, which one I used, whatever. Uh, I'm, sh I'm showing both. The trigger ends by the get timestamp. Okay? And I'm going to fire up this. So I'm going to fire up this, right? So uh, where the perform script? And I'm getting out of that record, right? So I will get that those records and I'm going to do the same, okay? Perform script on server go. So I hope there I will get the same records. Because I think I didn't get the same records. Okay. You all started right. with the found set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I start with a found set. So let's show all. Let's let's do the same I did, okay? Okay, so let's go to our uh, omit multiple thousand. And show them it, right? So, but your script's so, going to do the same thing. Yeah, it's going to it's doing the same thing. Do I? Uh, you're, you're starting with a thousand, and you're omitting a thousand. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, but I don't know why. Or, so I want the first thousand, by the way. But now he's showing nothing here. Which is weird. Don't you want to start with all the records shown? Because the script um, does your omit a thousand and then go to the. No, it, 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 it did it. He's doing it. That's why. That's why you don't show me because he's doing it. 
uh, 416, I say, I say, we are 416, you know, it's, it's doing it. Yeah. So, uh, so you do that. So the demo is, uh, is cranky, but, uh, it's because I don't know why the, the, this refresh here, uh, but, uh, he's doing it, you know, uh, 16 uh, is, is doing it. So I'm doing the replace on server so I can continue to work. It's on server, right? But I don't know why, you know, I, it's because, okay, that is done. So see, he has done it. He has done it. You know, the first thousand, it changed. So, and you can, okay, now it's a good demo because you can measure how long it takes per records to update it. It start at 4, 16, and 13, and it did like 20 on one second. And here it did like 10 on one second. And here it did much more, much more on one second. So it depends on the data you updated. Right, but he is doing. He did it right. You can see the the progression: 30, 31. Those are seconds, right? Those are seconds, right? So, uh, but when I'm zooming, when I do zoom, zoom stuff is so slow. Uh, so 32. So, so you do the update. You update your triggers on server. You do exactly what I've done. You select your the the, the, the record, and you do a replace on server, right? Always. Okay, so we can wrap up and. Um, and uh, we do tomorrow. Works for me. Thanks. Yep, Thank so. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.